how much money did I lose trading cryptocurrency this year? Hmm. Hmm. When I'm not making my yearly YouTube video, I work at a retail trading brokerage called Tasty Trade, and we recently launched our open API. And I also just got access to ChatGPT plugins. So obviously my brain thought, what better thing could I do than give our Lord and Savior ChatGPT direct access to my trading account? So that's what I did. And I'm going to tell you guys how to do it. It's pretty easy. Let's get started. We need three things to make this work. We need the plugin manifest file, the open API spec, and in some cases, a Python Flask app that acts as a proxy server um, running locally. That way, ChatGPT can talk to your other API and we can do any authentication that we need to do. First, let's do the plugin manifest. Really, the only important parts here are the name for human, in this case, called it Tasty Trade plugin, the name for model, called it just Tasty Trade, and then the description for human and description for model. This is what ChatGPT will load into its context window and use to understand when it should make requests out to this plugin. So in this case, I have plugin for managing your Tasty Trade Brokers account. You can view your account positions and balances. So typically here, you'd want to say what you can do with this plugin. The other parts are the off. Um, in this case, I have none because we have the proxy server, the API, which again, in this case, the URL is pointing to localhost, and then it's that slash openapi.yaml, and is user authenticated is again, false because we have the proxy server. Now the open API spec is even easier. So um, on Tasty Trades um, documentation website, I can actually just pull up the API docs and go to the balances and positions one. And there's actually a download to download the open API JSON. And then once I had that, I just opened up editor.swagger.io, which is just a free online browser editor for um, YAML and copy and pasted it in. And then I converted it to YAML and also converted it to version three, which I don't even know if you have to do this. I think you could just upload the JSON and then you put it into this openapi.yaml file. And the only difference is you want to update the URL to be that localhost URL. And there's also a bug right now in the docs where the account number, um, it says the type is an integer, but it's really a string. Um, so you have to fix that manually. And that's it for the open API spec. Now, the only actual code you have to write is this proxy.py Python file. And the point of this is that we have to authenticate all of our um, requests to the taste trade endpoints. So for that, I use .env, and I have this taste trade session token, which you can generate on your own using Postman. Um, there's some docs on it on Tasty's website. Um, then you set up the course to allow ChatGPT to access this local thing. Um, I hit the API URL, which in this case is api.tastyworks.com. And then we add four routes. The first one is this AI slash plug plugin, which is a manifest file. And that just sends back that manifest file. Um, then we have the open API. That's just open API specs. Again, same thing. Path path um, takes in only get requests. Um, you can also specify it to be like posts or puts if you have other endpoints. I add the authorization header for that session token. And then we forward the request to the actual Tastyworks server. And we just respond, respond back with the content. And that's literally it. The question is probably, how does it work? How do you actually get this into ChatGPT? Do a new chat, go to ChatGPT floor, plugins, uh, open up the plugin store, and then you can do develop your own plugin. And in this case, I want to do localhost 3333, find manifest file, and then you need, you'd also need the uh, proxy running at this point because that's um, what ChatGPT is really doing is hitting that URL, looking for that manifest JSON, and it sends it back and then it knows what to do with it. So you hit install, and that's it. Um, you have to specify your account number before you can do it. 
So let's see, for my account, and you can ask something like, what was my account balance on May 4th, 2023? And in this case, it's not working, but I can say, sure, what's my current balance? and then it'll tell me everything about my account balance. So you might be wondering, what's the point of this? It's all kind of contrived, it's not super useful. Um, for me, this was kind of just a proof of concept. Um, like I said, we launched our OpenAPI and I got access to this at the same time, so it's kind of just like the perfect um, use case of kind of testing out both of these new things. And I think it's more of just a example of what's to come as these large language models improve in the future. I think that we're going to see a lot more use cases. Um, like right now, with the pretty small context windows, you can't really place an order and the endpoints kind of have to be like tailor-made for um, these use cases where like right now you get back way too much data that kind of clogs up the context window too quickly. But in the future, if we either you know design endpoints thinking about these applications or the context windows get bigger, um, it's very likely that we'll be able to have just like a chat interface for pretty much any application we use day to day. Um, like in this case, it's not useful for me to be like, hey, what's my current positions? I can look at the website and figure that out far quicker than ChatGPT can. But if you start to tie in other plugins or kind of chain logic together, then it kind of gets interesting. You know, you could have it be, you could have it say, hey, pull in all of my Ethereum trades for the past 12 months, and then also tell me maybe what the RSI indicators were or like any other historical indicator. Or I don't know, it's, I'm not coming up with good ideas, but... I think it's more so that this stuff opens up the door for a lot of people to become more creative and you don't really need to be as competent as a coder to combine these things together. So I'm excited, scared, but more so excited. And yeah, if you guys make anything um, with this, let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that might be. It'll probably be a while.